Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Salman Iqbal. You can find me on Twitter at Salman Iqbal. On this channel, we'll be discussing everything tech. In this video, I have something special for you though. Today, we're going to be talking about YAML tips for Kubernetes. Before I start, I'd like to thank my friend and legend, Daniele Polencic, for helping me out putting this video together. So without further ado, let's get cracking. It's time for tip number one, indentation. So YAML uses spaces as indentation. You can use two spaces. Imagine your YAML file looks like this, a plain and simple pod YAML. Anytime you have to indent something, you go ahead and put in two spaces, like I'm showing you here on the containers node. And the subsequent name node also needs further two spaces of indentation. But if you'd like to double the fun, you can go with four spaces. I know, fun times. Let me show you the same YAML as before. Look at how spacious it looks. Where we had two spaces before, we now have four. Excellent. You might be thinking, should I use two or four spaces? Well, that's entirely up to you. You can pick either. In the midst of all this, you might be thinking, forget two spaces or four spaces, just give me tabs. Unfortunately, tabs are not allowed in YAML. Tabs have been outlawed as they are treated differently by different editors and tools. Indentation is critical to interpretation of YAML, so it was decided not to deal with it. If you like more bedtime reading on YAML specification, I have included the link to official docs in description. Time for tip number two on maps and lists. Let's start with maps. Maps let you associate key value pairs. On your screen, you can now see an example of a YAML file. On the first line, we have an API version as a key and v1 as value. On the second, we have kind as key and pod as the value, and so on and so forth. Maps can also be nested, and in Kubernetes, usually we nest a lot of maps. If your preference is not to write YAML, you can also write your Kubernetes manifests in JSON. Here you can see what an equivalent JSON could look like. Let's have a look at lists now. Lists are sequences of objects. As highlighted here in front of you, you can have any number of items in a list, which is defined as the items that start with a dash and indent from the parent. In this case, you're seeing a list of containers. As pods can have multiple containers, I can define them in a list. A list can also include further lists, like the ports list shown at the end of the file. And for good measure, you can see what the same YAML looks like in JSON. So we've just seen what maps and lists look like. Maps and lists are basic building block of any YAML file. Any value that's part of a list or of a maps value can be either a string, number, boolean, null, or another dictionary. In most cases, strings don't require quotes. But sometimes if you miss them, things can go wrong. Let's have a look. Let's say you want lists as environment variables with their country code. And coincidentally, you have Norway in your list with the code of NO or NO. Unfortunately, NO translates as false in YAML. Watch out for the NO problem. Better use quotes in this case. Let's take another example. Let's say you want to pass Postgres version as an environment variable. And you set it to 9.3 as shown here. YAML assumes that this is actually a number and it will be converted to a number. Also in this case, it's better to use quotes. Let's take the last example here. Let's say you want to set time as an environment variable and pass it to your application. In this case, we are setting it as 4.30 or half 4, 4 colon 30. Well, unfortunately, YAML converts it into 16,200, which is incorrect. So in short, to be on the safe side, use quotes for strings. 
Time for tip number three. Let's talk about delimiters and snippets. Imagine you have an application with a number of YAML files which describe the various resources of your application. And you have grown tired of opening and modifying separate files. There's a way of bunching them all in the same file. So you can start with writing the first definition and when you're done, you can add the three dashes as shown here and delimit the file, ready for you to put in another YAML definition in the next line. Well, what is a deployment without a service? I can type out the definition for a service and then when done, I can add the three magical dashes ready to define another definition after it. You might need to route external traffic to the service you just created. So you can go ahead and define an ingress manifest in the same YAML file. And as if by magic, we have defined the three Kubernetes manifests in the same file. And as some might say, fewer files, better times. Let's now talk about snippets. Let's say you have a deployment file and you might end up writing the same block of code over and over again in the same file. For example, labels. Repeated nodes are first identified by an anchor marked here with an ampersand. And then if you would like to reference it again later on in the file, you can reference it using an asterisk. This takes the snippet that you defined earlier and replaces it in place of where it was referenced. Beautiful stuff. Now you can say goodbye to furiously retyping the same block of lines in your YAML file again. No tech talk is complete without mentioning an array of tools that are at our disposal. For my last top tip, tip number four, it's time to share some tools you can use to improve your YAMLing experience. How do you know if you've made a mistake in your YAML? So let's take a look at some of these tools. Let's say you've written a YAML file already and you'd like to know if it's actually a valid YAML. One of the things you can do is you can use an online checker. So if I grab this YAML content and I head on over to yamllint.com, I can paste my file and check go and validate it. You can imagine this doesn't know anything about Kubernetes, so it's a little bit limited. But there's other tools too. Perhaps you want to use a CLI. So there is a YAML lint CLI that you can install in your machines or in your CI CD pipeline. And the way it works is I have the same YAML file that, we, that I showed you previously. What you can do is you can call YAML lint and pass the name of the YAML file. And any warnings and any issues with it, it will show you on the output. There's another plugin that's more aware of Kubernetes. If you are using Visual Studio Code, you can install an extension from Red Hat. So if you head over to Visual Studio Code and look for extensions called YAML, this is one of the extensions that you can use. You can install it and it provides you suggestions and auto completion and also checks if you entire YAML is valid, plus a number of other things. Let's say you wanted to use the command line tool instead to read or replace values in YAML file. You can not actually use YQ for that. YQ is a portable command line YAML processor. And just like YAML lint, you can install this in your command line, in your machine or CI/CD pipeline. Let me show you a few examples of what you might be able to do with it. So we have the same YAML file as before, and what I can do is I can read any nodes in there. So if I stick this YQR pod YAML, and I can go to a specific node and read the value out. Let's say you have a file that you want to replace some values at a specific environment. So what I can do is rather than YQR, I can do YQW, which stands for write. And whatever the value of the images I wanted to replace it with, learn k8 slash app that 1.0.0. So it takes that file as we had previously before and re replaces the image with the image that we wanted to. Let's look at another example of YQ, what YQ can do. Imagine I have this base file. And in the base file, I define a container that will be a side container for every single pod that gets deploy deployed. So what I can do is I can merge these two files, the base file and the pod file. I can run this command, yq, 
And you can see I've done YQM merge and I've appended it, the base and the pod.yaml. And I've got this YAML file, which is now include two pods, two, two containers in the same pod. You might also want to read the file as JSON. So you can just do YQ R minus J pod.yaml. And this comes out as JSON. That is all I wanted to share with you on YAML tips for Kubernetes. If you have any tips of yours, please leave them in the comments below. Also, please do subscribe to the channel. I'll be dropping more videos. Thank you very much for watching.